Hey guys, this is Carl from CarlSapsy.com here with another tutorial. If you have any questions about my videos or anything in general, uh, head to my website and you can message me via my contact me page. Or if you want to just leave me a message down below in the comment section and like my videos and subscribe to me if you want to. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be making a program in which we will be finding out how we can use the for loop in order to make a basic time stable program. So this is what the program is basically going to be, how to or the solutions to your time table problems. Okay, so like I said a minute, uh, a couple of seconds ago, if uh, this involves using the for loop. Now, you can try to understand what's going to happen if you don't already have prior knowledge on how to use the for loop. However, if you don't have prior knowledge, I would advise you go to my website and under the Python section, uh, under my Python tutorials, you can have a look at how to use the for loop. This is one of the two loops uh, between the for loop and the while loop, and they are both essential in Python programming. Whereas if you already have knowledge of this of the for loop, then this should be fairly straightforward for you. So what are we going to do? We're first of all going to make a variable called number, and this number is going to have an integer value, and we're going to call we're going to just say what is the number you would like to times. Now, obviously, since this is an integer input, if you put in any other, if you put in any letters or anything, and then the program won't function properly. And if again, if you put in decimal point numbers, <coughs> the program won't won't function properly unless we make this a float input, which will which I'll do quickly in a minute. Anyways, now what are we going to do? This is the part where the for loop comes into play. So we're going to put for times table in the range of 1 to 13. Now I've called this times table because this is going to be our second variable effectively in which it's this is going to be our variable that is continuously changing so even though our number variable will stay the same the times table variable will increase from 1 until 12 not until 13 this is because of your index values in which uh, they go up in chronological order, but your starting value is always going to be zero. Therefore, that gets cut out, and therefore your thirteenth number gets cut out. Therefore, it's always going to be twelve. So we're going to go ahead and print off our first placeholder value, or placeholder value zero technically, which is going to be our number because we want it to stay constant throughout. We're going to multiply this by our placeholder value number one which is going to be times table and that's going to be equal to our placeholder value of two now this is going to be the number multiplied by the times table to give us our final answer which is placeholder value two and therefore this should be fairly self-explanatory because I've just explained it so zero is times uh, is number one is times table and two is number times times table Make sure you close off all your brackets. Now, if I go ahead and print this, what is the number you would like to time? So I'm going to say go ahead and put in 12. And that's technically the program. So the number card, the number variable has stayed constant throughout. They've got 12 all in one column. Then you've got the variable that changes, which is times table, which has been continuously changing until 12, not 13. And then you have the answer of 12 times 1 is 12, all the way until 12 times 12 is 144. Now, for presentation purposes, you it this doesn't look very visually appealing because it's not in sets columns, which are uh, which contain the units in one column, your tens in another, your hundreds in another, your thousands in another, etc., etc. Therefore, you can use certain alignment functions. Now, this is very simple because all you're going to do here is 
Uh, one sec, let me find it. From this program, yeah. So as we could see here, we had 12 in this column here. And since this is staying constant, we're not going to change this. However, 1 to 9 seems to be in the tens column, even though, but we need it to be in the units column. So what do we do? We can use the alignment function, which incorporates a colon, and we're going to stick a 2 in front of it. Now, the arrow is pointing to the right. And this is the way I like to remember it. If it's pointing to the right, then the alignment function is two places in from the right. Or from the right, yeah. Whereas here, so that's going to be one of the functions. So if I go ahead and just find this quickly. So what this is going to do is this is going to be moving from 1. So it's going to be 1 and then 2. So your number 1 will actually be here now. Then number 2 will be here, 3 will be here, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So therefore, all the units will be in one column. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how this is how this looks. And I had 12. And there you have it. So now all your 1 to 9 is in the same column as uh, 10, uh, 0, 1, and 2 from your 10s. Finally, we're going to do the same thing, except with... Uh, the other with the answer variable so we're going to go ahead and put a colon and we're going to say let's say three because in some cases depending on the number it can go into thousands if you want to make it really big it can go into millions potentially so this again are uh, these variables here the number three and number two they can all be changed as well so sticking with the same number so if I go ahead and type in table 12 and there you have it. Now if you see here, you've got 12 times 1 is 12, and the 24680 is all in the units column, the tens are in the tens column, and the hundreds are in the hundreds column. Whereas before, they were all completely just not together, effectively. So there you have it. Now you've got your complete times table, which looks good. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much for watching. This is Carl from carlsapti.com.